Welcome to Before the Bell, your home for actionable pre-market content. Good morning, traders. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Thursday, March 10th. It is 6.58 in the morning as I'm starting the video. And don't forget to run your player at 1.5x. Taking a quick look at futures. Bitcoin down 7%. That was after a big day yesterday, reversing course. Oil, which got destroyed yesterday, is bouncing back 4.5%. Gold up 1.25%. Copper up 1.5%. And equities are off uh, roughly between 1% and 1.5%. On the macro front, really big day today. We've got uh, the CPI print at 8.30. That'll be the last big data point before the Fed meets next week to consider their... Uh, uh, rate policy going forward uh, i think i haven't looked at the official consensus but uh, probably something a little north of seven uh, percent uh, i think if you got an eight handle that would be an an upside surprise if you got something in the sixes that would be a downside surprise We've got uh, jobless claims and also a 30-year bond auction at 1 p.m. this afternoon. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at some charts today. Um, here is my what I call the extremo meter. What it is, it's a uh, looking at the put-to-call ratio when you get breaks above the red line. It's regarded as extreme call buying. When you get breaks below the green line, it's regarded as extreme put buying. The, the indicator itself is much better at calling bottoms than it, it uh, is at calling tops. I mean, you, you notice regions like this where you've got just a whole lot of extreme call buying yet it doesn't really result in a top. Whereas you go the other way, and you can take this thing back in time, when you get clusters of put buying, or even one big flush move, where everybody panics and buys puts, you're much more likely to get a bottom. And I've, I've marked those locations with the green uh, uh, vertical lines. And you can see it, it, it does a pretty good job. Now, yesterday was the first time in this little sequence that we got an extreme put buying event below the green line. We had it right here. You can see that the level was um, uh, 0.877. My cutoff area is around 0.925 so a little bit below uh, which means a little bit extreme on the put side keep in mind though that extreme put buying like extreme call buying can persist for a number of days before you get that you know capitulation so it's something. It's something to be aware of. It, it, I wanted. I wanted to point that out because it's important. We, because they don't come that often. So that it was interesting. So we had a a big up day yesterday. Right in the markets, uh, three percent in a lot of cases. People took that opportunity to buy puts, which I thought was interesting. Looking at the VIX, we've been trapped. Persi persistently high in this range between uh, 30 and 36. We had a couple of excursions up here, weren't able to hold. I think uh, a good line to be looking at is this support band between 30 and 29. You make a break below 29 on the VIX and I think there's a good chance then at that point we could be moving into a bull cycle for stocks, at least for a while, um, you know, a multi-week kind of a move. But up here with a 3% uh, 
up move yesterday in stocks, I mean, it really didn't come down that much. And we're certainly still above support here in this tw uh, 30 range. So I would, on your dashboard, or if you keep maintaining a VIX chart, you know, set yourself an alarm at 30. And when you see that thing go off, time to pay attention because that would indicate that uh, price for VIX is moving in to this um, support area. Wanted to take a quick look at gold. We, we came up right here, which was the prior high going back a couple of years. And then uh, it let go over the last couple of days. This is a pretty nice little entry point uh, here. You can see we've got a large volume over price bar coming in right at 185. If you wanted to take a shot here, I think it would be really objective. Uh, with the caveat that if you got a break below 185, you're probably going to come down in here to 181.50 in this uptrend line. And that uh, would certainly be a place to buy. I don't think this I don't think this was a one and done kind of thing for gold. I think something more structural is going on. One way to approach it might be uh, depending on your view, maybe put on half here with an opportunity to add at trend support if you got that break. And then, you know, your cost average would be right in here about 180, yeah, 184 ish, depending on exactly when you did things. But as long as this holds trend, I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. Let's go on to the major averages. I want to point out several things. Yes, big rally yesterday. Yes, that's, you know, all things being considered good. Keep in mind on SPY, still well below the daily trend. Uh, and given volatility, you're looking at plus or minus 2% on a daily basis, which is which we've been getting. So good, we got an up, up cycle day. In the big scope of things, the chart is still bearish. One level that I'd like you to make a point to alarm or note is 432.50. That's a big line on the chart. You see that was a big low right here. We've got a large volume over price bar, really the largest on the chart right here at that level. If price could take that out, which would mean taking out the downtrend line, moving into this gap, and then making a run at the 200, that would be important because then you'd have a big line of demarcation right at the 200, which comes in at 437. So I think that's going to be an important level to really validate or confirm a breakout and an up cycle. So I would uh, curb your enthusiasm on the bullish side. You know, if you're a nimble trader, that's a whole different thing. But if you're looking to anchor some sh uh, long positions, just keep in mind we're still below trend on on the daily time frames. We're even still below trend on the two-hour time frame. Note the uh, gap from yesterday morning is unfilled. We did a gap and go. You know, we, we got above this 425 line, which is good. I think you can use that as your pivot this morning on this time frame. And you can see here is that 432 area on the chart that we just talked about with the uh, $3 or so gap above that has yet to be filled. And then we've got the daily 50 EMA coming down, which would be... Uh, be another level of resistance on an up cycle move here getting some granularity on a 30 minute chart we got on the open yesterday that gap took out this downtrend line and then worked its way up to resistance here 
at uh, at uh, 428. Uh, let me go back. I might have given you a bad. If you wanted, if you wanted to move that pivot up to 428, that's fine. Uh, this is definitely support though, 425 on on the chart here, and then you've got the top of the gap, roughly 422. I mean, uh, let's see. 422.82, if you want to, if you want to be precise, you know, we could come back here, back test the top of the gap, then go higher, but you certainly want to have that level alarmed, 422.82 as a gap entry, because if they fade that, then you're going to have roughly a, uh, almost a $6 move down to fill the gap. And you certainly want to be par participating to the downside if uh, such a move were to, were to develop. Moving on to the Qs. Very much like SPY. You've got a steep downtrend line here on the daily where price uh, was stalled yesterday. I think an important level on this chart is... 342.50. That would give you a breakout of the daily and a, and a break above some of this high volume over price resistance and give you the opportunity to move higher. But keep in mind, we have a full bearish stack on our EMAs. And let's say, let's say we get a breakout up to 342. You're really just back testing the, the declining 20. That's, I mean, that's better than staying down here. But my point is, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. You've got uh, the declining 20. You got a lot of this high volume over price resistance looming overhead that would have to be chewed through. Um, And that's always the case. Once you drop, you know, drop below key levels, it's a lot harder to go back up through those levels than it is uh, the other way around. Why? Because you could view all these volume over price bars as overhead supply, because I guarantee you there are people trapped all along the way on the way down you know they tried to buy this dip they were feeling really good then they got the rug pulled uh etc you know all the way from near the top i'm sure there's people still trapped up here from the top when they thought we were going higher and then when we got this fast flush they never got out so those are overhead supply uh people that are trapped and when you see these large volume over price bars overhead you can think of it in that way moving on to the two hour chart we stopped right on the line uh, right here this morning I think 335 is going to be a good pivot level for those of you actively trading you'll have a downtrend line and lateral resistance to overtake if you get a break above 335 this morning, I think uh, there's a good chance to go higher if there's a break on the CPI data or just market conditions they build on yesterday's uh, positive action. You can see here we had a cluster of activity. We had some reaction lows here. Uh, we had some reaction lows here. That'll be resistance on the way back up. But if you can break above, uh, you got some running room up to 340. And then you've got these high volume over price bars and a lot of trading in this area between 342.50 and uh, 347. So keep that in mind on a break above. IWM, uh, we gapped higher. Nice move, uh, almost 3%. But... 
This is a big range down here, $20 wide range. I haven't marked in the gap there. I will do that. I think today above uh, 200, you can be long, but below 200 would uh, eat into the bull case. Two hour chart, you can see we've got a little gap here, a little $2 gap above. So if it can make a move above 200, you got a $2 gap to fill. And then the big next level is up here at 203. So there could be, you know, a decent upsized or uh, upside move worth trading if we get a move into the gap and then that gap fills and we keep going to the high side. On the low side, uh, the low yesterday was 197.62. And that would be where uh, this gap starts. I would just say 198, more or less, right here. You might get a back touch of that this morning. And then uh, rocket higher. If we drop below 198, good chance that this uh, gap will fill. And you see it a lot more clearly right here. Get a little resolution on that. And, uh, and if you're trading, you know, shorter time frames, actively trading during the day, you'll get that resolution on your lower time frame charts, as I've done here on the 30 minute chart. You know, if you're trading the 15 or the five, just draw your gap in on whatever time frame you're trading, and then you'll know the exact point where your go or no go line would be but keep in mind that's a pretty wide gap here so you want to participate on the downside if you get that um if you get that break below if you're new to the channel welcome i appreciate you spending some time with me this morning uh what i do each and every morning is set the team up with objective levels and thoughts for today uh, to set them up for success. Uh, over time, if you stick with me, I think your confidence will build in the levels that I give you. And I really think that's half the battle for an active trader is to know which levels are important to shoot against, either on the long or the short side. And once you have that confidence, it's going to be up to you to hone your execution skills and managing those trades. I can help with that, but I can't hit the buy and sell button for you. So if, if that sounds appealing to you to uh, take the technicals off of your workload in your pre-market routine, hit the subscribe button, the alarm bell, and uh, join the team. Jump over in the show notes. There's a place where you can get a link to the blog site, drop in your email address, and then you'll get all my content morning, noon, or night right to your email box. We'd love to have you. You'll also get an invite to our trading room. You'll meet a lot of aspiring traders just like yourself uh, where you can bounce ideas and get camaraderie in the uh, group of traders that are trying to improve every day. Facebook got a nice level here at 198 uh still well you know this is a bearish chart if you go back to the the daily chart you'll see uh you know just how much of a pronounced downtrend it is after we had the big gap down and then we've dribbled much lower since that time but turnarounds happen that's why we got to keep track of it uh, you've got a nice, well-defined 60-minute downtrend. Uh, I think on the long side, you got to uh, wait until you get a breakout above this to kind of see if the bulls can feel it and put in a rally. Until then, I would be a fader of rallies until at least this downtrend line can be taken out 
and you know if you get a little push today and you see a stall I think you can fade that if you get uh, you know if price is unable to uh, take out this 198 level then very good chance that this comes right back down fills this gap and then comes back down to the 190 area and potentially breaks it uh, to the downside Apple uh, I'm looking at it pre-market it's down about three bucks trading about 160 so uh, you can see how important this 163 line was and it's not on the chart anymore uh, there was a gap from 163 to 159 that was filled yesterday we gapped higher went right back up to that 163 level and now in the pre-market we're back here at 160 so know where your gap is that would be at 159.41 right here so a move below probably going to fill that gap and probably even go down and retest this low if it holds then you may have a rally that comes back towards this 163 but you can see very important level here and back here in the charts support becomes resistance uh, the day before yesterday on Tuesday we had that rocket run right up here failed yesterday gap and go got right back up to the same point and stalled so you can tell just by the price action that there's been a lot of uh, resistance right at that 163 level Tesla uh, you got that gap and go yesterday right up to this 860 level that was our target um, we said that that was an important level why you've got overhead resistance here you've got a large volume over price bar here you've got the 200 that lies just above 860 and you've got a downtrend line so there's a lot of resistance right here at this level that's definitely your pivot point for today if it can break above you'd be looking at 875 and then 905 if it gets turned back probably going to come back here to this 830 area which would be an important level to hold uh, just like a lot of these other charts Microsoft we've been at this level before 290 resistance 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 support support whenever you're looking for an important line you look for all the reactions and you can see this is one of the more important levels on the chart here at 290 you get a break above I think you got a good shot at 294 and possibly up to the downtrend line at 296 I would if there's some bullish activity today and you get a break above 290 I would take that with a stop just below on the flip side if there's a move in the 290 and you get this type of action it's a very objective short with a stop just above because you can see just I mean how important that line is in the whole scope of things on the chart uh, Amazon announced a 20 for 1 split last night I haven't looked uh, exactly where it is this morning but uh, obviously it did a moonshot right up to this trend line around 3000 I mean give or take it might be 3010 or 2950 somewhere in that area usually splits are bullish but we've had big gaps in Amazon before that have been faded so when when the stock opens mark your big gap it's going to be roughly $200 wide and for some reason they start fading that 
that would be a nice trade. Also, I think it would really speak to market sentiment uh, because those splits are usually bullish. It was bullish for Apple. It was bullish for Tesla. It was bullish for NVIDIA uh, that have all had splits, you know, in the not too distant past. So watch that. Mark your gap. Even if you're not uh, a big Amazon trader, if they start to fade that, that would be a worthwhile trade to take because if they, you know, if the thing rolls downhill, that $200 gap would probably be uh, done pretty quickly. Google, uh, nice day. Gap and go. Jumped over this resistance line at 26.10 and then went right up to this level here at 26, tw excuse me, 26.60, which is just above where all this trading took place. And remember, when you got a trading range, when you break out of that trading range and you can see you got a back test of it and then it fell away, when you return to the trading range, once you get inside it, your target is the top of the range. And in this case, that would be 2710. And the door will remain open to that as long as you stay above 2660. So if you caught any of this, congratulations. If you still have your position, stay long until you get a break below 2660 and then that's where you would stop out on your gains because once it's above that level it should not make a move back down and if it does very bad sign uh don't know why i clicked that wanted to go this way to netflix little move much like facebook just kind of down in the weeds very bearish daily chart still below trend on even the 60-minute chart we got a gap from yesterday that will eventually need to be filled we're back at this uh, 357.50 area I think that's your pivot today um, uh, this hasn't been particular I mean if you got short up in here and you just held it that's been a great trade but in terms of intraday it's it's been a tough trade because you're not getting a lot of intraday movements if you wanted to you know get a position trade started at some point along the way uh, and hold it uh, I wouldn't do it here simply because if it can't even break above a hourly downtrend line I wouldn't want to be trying to pick a bottom so if you're actively trading this you could get a move this morning up to the downtrend line but then TA dictates that you try to fade that and if price can break above 371 then you just take it off and you get stopped out that's how I'd handle that SMH very interesting price action why uh, you got a gap up and it died right on the trend line and lateral resistance you can see we had a low here we had resistance here and here so this 257.50 looks to be a pretty important level if if you get a break above I think you can be long up until 262.50. That will be an important level. Why? Because you've got this prior trading range. So then if you break above 262.50, you got an open door to 270. So this is going to be a really important spot for SMH here this morning. And just a couple other charts before we wrap up. Snap, we got short on the gap entry of 35 we had a good initial move but 
uh, now is kicking back to back test this breakdown. If you're short, and I am, uh, just know where your stop is or know what your trade plan is. I think it's going to resolve down. There's no reason to think that there's going to be a big rally. But you, you break much above 35, then prudence tells you, you know, to get out and recalibrate. And it just goes to show you in this market, sometimes you've got to just grab wins when you can. Because, I mean, at this point here, being $5 in the money, that was looking really good on the screen. And now, not so much. I mean, I'm still positive on the position. But that's been the case in a lot of a lot of uh, uh, trades lately. Just the sheer volatility. Uh, like I say, one day, you're God's gift to trading. And then they rip it the other way. 2 3%. Not so much. So when... I think you've got to have a faster trigger on some of these trades. And then, you know, just, I mean, that's the environment that we're in. We're certainly not in a trend environment where, okay, I got the uptrend. Now it just grinds higher or now I've got the downtrend. I'm just staying short, staying short and let the thing feed you. In this pure ball environment, you grab something for you know a long or a short just to understand that it can reverse on a dime so keep that in mind and also in that environment as well options are expensive and if 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 you're normally a trend trader say buying something you know you see something you like and you're buy want to buy options on that out in April or usually you know out in time you know April May June would be your normal format you may have to dial that back and say look we're not in a trend environment I got a nice setup here but only maybe only buy two weeks worth of time buy a March expiration with the idea of if I get a one or two day move, I'm out because of the volatility and I'm just going to take quick baby wins instead of, you know what, my April position looked great for two days, but now they wiped it out the other way. You're spending a lot on premium and you're never going to stay in the trade six weeks in this type of environment. Unless you've got, you know, high conviction or you're in something that really is trending. So maybe just some trading thoughts for you. I sent this out yesterday. I think it, it bears a reminder. Uh, you know, is this a breakdown, back test fail? Which it very well could be. Or is this a breakout situation here on the tan solar ETF here at 79 you got or excuse me 78 you got a uh, price that has recaptured all the trend lines I mean all the EMAs except for the 200 so now we're back at this big trading range between 78 and 91 you get a break above the 200 and back in this range, your automatic target is going to be 91 for the reasons that we just talked about. Um, breaking back into a prior trading range, once you're out of it, is um, in this case bullish because you're re-entering from the bottom. Your target becomes the top of the box. So at 91 plus, you will have the 200 EMA also as support. So I think that bears a uh, an alarm at that level. And then I just wanted to touch on Core Labs. 
which was a position we took uh, late last week, getting, uh, actually it might even have been this week, uh, we got a touch of this 36 area where we've got a high volume over price bar. You can see that was resistance back in this time frame. So now uh, we're looking for a move above this this area here. I'd have to put the pencil to it to get that exact level. I think it's about 37 actually. So if we get a break above 37, then we'll be looking towards the prior high as a target here on Core Labs, which is an oil services company. So off to a good start. We'll see if price can take out this 37 area and give us a, uh, a nice runner in the oil services space. So quick recap. Watch that support band on VIX 29 to 30. As long as it stays above, you can count on, you know, 2% volatility in either direction in a very choppy market. You get a break back down below 29. The bulls could really get some legs going. Watch your downtrend lines for breakouts in conjunction with the... Uh, drop in the VIX. That would be a good confirming signal. We've got CPI. Watch for surprises to the downside or surprises to the upside. Keep in mind that we've got the uh, FOMC and March options expiration next week. So that'll be really, really important. Stay nimble on your positions. Don't get married to anything. For too long take profits when you can um, very choppy market very hard to get uh, anything sustainable rolling for multi days let alone multi-week periods take a look at gold if you're not in it we're at a good support level on the 60 minute chart and I don't think gold's run is over. So let's wrap it up there. Hope you enjoy the video. Hope you got something good out of it. Um, best of luck to you today. Have an inspired day of trading. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.